Hey guys, welcome back to the Mindful Hunter channel. I'm your host as always, Jay Nickel. So today we have a somewhat interesting video. Um, we're gonna review three binoculars that at first glance might not make sense to compare against each other, but I'm gonna get into the details of why I think they're actually really well suited to compare against each other. Also wanna mention that this is the first video I'm shooting in the new house. We don't have the YouTube studio finished yet. However, the weather was beautiful, so we're gonna shoot this outside. All right, let's get into the nuts and bolts. We're gonna be comparing the Zeiss Victory SF 10x42s against the Swarovski NL Pure 12x42s against the Swarovski SLC 15x56s. I purchased all of these with my own money. I own all three. I've used all three extensively. This is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form, so I have no brand allegiance to any particular manufacturer, so this is gonna be 100% objective, field-tested review. Now, let me give a little bit of a rundown about why I think this is an interesting review, because all of these binoculars look at solving the problem in a slightly different way, okay? So you have your standard 10 by 42, which is if you talk to most people would be your go-to binocular if you were only gonna own one binocular. And the reason for this is there's limited handshake, a fairly decent field of view, they're readily available. You could make an argument for eights, maybe, but I think if you surveyed the hunting public, you would find that the vast majority of people, especially Western hunters, if they're only gonna own one pair of binoculars, it's a 10 by 42. Now, if you are in, uh, if you do the type of hunting where you glass a lot, the second pair of binoculars you might look at would be a pair of 15s. Very common to have a pair of 10s and a pair of 15s. These are gonna go on your body, the 10s are gonna go on your body, you're gonna use them for hand holding. 15s are always gonna be on a tripod. You could put the 10s on the tripod as well and I would recommend that. But, and the 15s you're gonna use more as like a, a stable, set up, sit down in glass kind of binocular. Now 12s have always been an interesting opinion and I did used to own just a single pair of 12s. They were the Razor 12 by 50s. I actually quite liked those binoculars. Now they give you the best of both worlds. They have high enough magnification that you can pick out some extra detail when you put them on the tripod, but the field of view isn't so small that handshake makes them unusable, so you can kind of get away with hand-holding them. However, I think there's kind of issues with, with all of them in regards to weight, handshake, ergonomics, and so we're gonna go through and look at each of those elements and I'm gonna explain which, which binoculars I think win out in which case. First, let's talk some tech specs. I pulled all of these details off the Outdoorsman site. I really respect those guys and if you're looking to buy a pair of binos, I highly recommend giving those guys a call. All right, let's start with the Zeiss. These retail for 2750 US. They have a field of view of 360 feet at 1000 yards and they weigh 27.5 ounces. Moving on to the NL Pures, these cost 3,100 US dollars. They weigh 29.5 ounces, two ounces more than the Victories. And they have a field of view at 340 feet at 1,000 yards. The SLC 15s retail for 2,350. They have a field of view at 235 feet at 1,000 yards. And they weigh 43 ounces. So real quick, 2750, 3100, 2350. 360 feet, 340 feet, 235 feet, 27.5 ounces, 29.5 ounces, and 43 ounces. So now that we have an idea of what these cost, what they weigh, and what some of the specs are, let's get into my experience with, with each of these binoculars. So I, I, I've owned them all for quite a while, except for the NL Pures I bought about four months ago. I've had the Victories for over a year and a half and the same as these. I've used all of these in multiple hunting situations. I've handheld them all. I have tripod mounted them all. 
Each of these binoculars are outfitted with an outdoorsman's stud, which in my opinion is the best tripod setup. And I've, I've archery hunted and rifle hunted with all three. So I feel fairly confident to discuss the pros and cons of each of these binoculars. Now let's talk a moment about quality of glass. If I was gonna rank these, I would go first place for the NL Pure, very, very, very close second place for the Zeiss 10x42s. And then the 15s would be, a, I don't wanna say a distant third, but there's definitely more of a gap between the Victories and the SLCs than there is between the NL Pures and the Victories. Now let's take a moment and talk about the eye box of each binocular. Now the eye box, I want you to imagine that there is an imaginary rectangular cube behind the ocular pieces of each of these where your eyes can be and you still get a full field of view. So if an optic has a larger eye box, then there's, it's, there's more forgiveness, you have more leeway. This is really important with rifle scopes. Like everybody's had that rifle scope that it's just that there's like one little magic spot where you put your eye and you get a full scope. And if you move anywhere out of that eye, you, you lose almost all of your field of view. That would be considered a fairly small eye box. So again, I'm gonna rank these. Biggest, most comfortable eye box again goes to the NL Pure. Again, very close second with the Zeiss, but there's a noticeable difference. And the Swaro 15s, I do find them a little bit finicky. When you have them just right, they're beautiful, but I don't find the eye box as large as either of the NL Pures or the Victories. Now, one could argue it doesn't matter as much because you're more than likely gonna have these mounted on a tripod, and I would agree, which is why I wouldn't really deduct any points for that smaller eye box on the, on the 15s, but it's just something I think we should note. Up next, ergonomics. I gotta give all three of these five out of five. Uh, the eye cup mechanics are fantastic with all three. The rubberized coating is beautiful on all three. Uh, the quality of the manufacturing is fantastic. Like, yeah, I can't say a single bad thing about the ergonomics or the manufacturing of, of any of these binoculars. Um, yeah, they're, but they're also the, 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 the best in class in each of the lines, so it's not, it's not surprising. But I wouldn't say that there's any point of differentiation among the three in ergonomics or build quality. Okay, now let's talk about handshake, because in my opinion, that's really what this review is about. Like, let's be honest, if the 15s didn't weigh, you know, 43 ounces and you could hold them with zero handshake, there'd be a strong argument to just walk around with 15s strapped to your chest all the time. Some people might argue for the limited field of view and I would, I would tend to agree. I think that's going a little bit far, but certainly you'd be walking around with 12s. However, historically, for me, 12s have provided a little bit too much handshake. And for those who are kind of a little bit less experienced, it, it's exactly what it sounds like. When you hold them up to your eyes without a stabilizer of some kind, the shake introduced by your hands makes it hard to pick out details in the distance. Now, for most people, the 15s are not really gonna be a usable handheld binocular. You could, if you were gonna sit and prop your elbows up on your knees and kind of do the hold your hat trick, you can get it done, but it's not a practical option. Um, so in my experience, I really liked 12s as a, as a one does it all binocular, but the handshake was too great. This is why I mentioned the field of view earlier. The field of view on these 12s is so close to the 10s that you're compensating for that handshake. So I want you to think about your iPhone. When you zoom in with your iPhone, you will notice that all of the movements that you make with your hand are greatly exaggerated. And it's actually hard to hold it still enough to get a usable video. That is because by reducing the field of view into the same ocular plane, if you will, you are exaggerating those handshakes to your eye so they feel like they're bigger. I don't know the science of how they are able to magnify while retaining the field of view in the NL Pure, but the secondary effect to getting a binocular that allows you to see more and closer 
is that the handshake is noticeably reduced. It is so noticeably reduced that it's basically the same as the Victory 10s. Now, I would say the Victory 10s are maybe one to 2% less handshake. And take all of this with a grain of salt. I just hunted with my buddy Spencer and he can almost just basically handhold the 15s. He just naturally has almost zero handshake. I would say I'm slightly above average as far as handshake goes. So um, it is something that I do consider when I buy binos. That's why I got rid of the 12 by 50 Razor HDs because they just weren't usable to me as an everyday binocular. So the whole reason I bought the NL Peers in the first place is that my old setup with the 10s and the 15s, I was thinking to myself, I'd be willing to give up 3X magnification if I could handhold a binocular that had reduced handshake that would give me an additional 2X over the 10s and retain the same field of view. And that's exactly what I'm doing. One note I do want to make regarding the handshake and the NL Pures, I highly recommend this additional forehead rest. I have found it fits in most binocular harnesses without increasing the size. The flap just kind of folds over top of it. It is an extra 175 bucks, but I, I think it's really worth it. Um, I think the forehead rest in conjunction with the increased field of view, it's that synergy that really reduces the handshake on this particular pair of binos. Um, and I don't quite think the effect would be as pronounced if you didn't have the forehead rest as well. So I highly recommend buying this piece. I'd like to make a note on something I've coined focus forgiveness. And if we want to get technical, it's really the depth of field or the plane through which a binocular or an optic maintains focus. I notice some optics have really good optical clarity, but that the depth of that plane of the, the, the amount of territory that it focus is so thin that it's really hard to like nail what's in focus. Do you know what I mean? Like you scroll past it a little bit and then you come back and then you go eh, 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 and then finally you have what's in focus. And if it moves a couple feet, you kind of have to refocus. I am extremely impressed with both the NL Pures and the Zeiss Victories. And in fact, that's one of the things that sets the Zeiss Victories apart for me is that they really have the ability, things just seem to snap into focus. Like the first attempt, you scroll to it once and bam. And I think it's because that depth of field is just a little bit deeper. That plane of, of distance that remains in focus is just a little bit wider. And so you don't have to be as precise. And if I was gonna rank all these in focus forgiveness, I would say the victories uh, by a very slim margin, super close second with the NL Pures. And then again, slightly behind those would be the Swaro SLC 15s. I find them just a touch more finicky, much like I do with the iBox. You'll notice not a lot of manufacturers make a really high powered pair of 15s. And I think it's because technically they're a very difficult binocular to build. Um, and I think that's why we see compromises in things like iBox, focus forgiveness. They're just a little bit more finicky. But I just wanted to note that because that's one of the things that I give almost a usability ranking in, in, in optics for. Like, I don't really give a shit what things say on paper. I want to feel them in my hands. I want to go out in the field and I want to look at things um, and, 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 and see how practical and how usable. And the ability or the difficulty with which I, I have to focus in on things is something that really contributes to my happiness with, a, with, with an optic. When things snap into focus quickly, I, I tend to really enjoy an optic that has the ability to do that. I think I should also take a moment and address light transmission. Uh, you can look up the actual specs on these. Again, I did my best to compare these optics at dusk and at dawn. And I said this in my other video and somebody got really upset when I said a $500 pair of binoculars and a $2,500 pair of binoculars look almost identical at noon. The fact of the matter is I stand behind that. 
I'm not gonna say they look identical, but they're pretty damn close. Where you really start to see the, the expensive glass pull away is in that, that, those transitionary moments like dusk and dawn. And I will say in that regard, practically speaking, these are all on par with each other. Maybe the NL peers and the victories edge out the SLC slightly, but you gotta remember you've got 56 millimeter objectives on the SLCs. So from a practical standpoint, I would say the light transmission in all of these and the low light performance in all of these are equal. And I don't think one stands out in particular amongst the rest. So if I was gonna just boil this down and say, you know, what my ultimate recommendation would be, if you have the money and you want the best pair of binoculars and you only ever want to carry around one pair of binoculars, NL Pure 12 by 42s. And I specifically recommend the 12s. I wouldn't buy the 8s and I wouldn't buy the 10s. Some people will disagree and you're more than welcome. But for what I do, which is predominantly Western hunting and I do some timber hunting, uh, but binoculars aren't as necessary or aren't as important in my success in that regard, I like the 12 power. And because they have the reduced handshake and the increased field of view, I would, I would get the 12s, the NL Pures. Now, if you are predominantly an archery hunter, or I would say solely an archery hunter, and you wanted to save a couple bucks, there, that one to 2% reduced handshake holding the victories with one hand is a little bit nicer on your eyes than holding the NL peers with one hand. And that's the thing with archery hunting you have to realize is that 99% of the times I'm carrying my binos or I'm carrying my, my bow in one hand and I'm walking around and I'm looking up and I'm walking around and I'm looking up. It's not like rifle hunting where I have my rifle in a sling and I have both hands. Now you could say, well, put your bow in a sling, but let's be honest, there's no real good system out yet that allows you to detach the bow quick enough to respond to like a live hunting situation, which is why 90% of the time, if I'm hunting, my bow, is, my bow is in my hand. And so that being said, also, if you're predominantly a truck hunter, like let's say you, you hunt a ton in Arizona, I do still think there's an argument to own the 15s. The additional 3X over the 12s is nice and if you were gonna be going coos hunting and you're gonna be hunting out of your truck so you're not really that concerned about weight, I would bring two pairs of binoculars. I would probably still stick with the 12s but the 10s would be a perfect choice and you're gonna save almost 400 bucks. So at, at that point, I think there's again a very strong argument to just stick with the 10s and the 15s. Um, again, if you're more budget conscious though, you could feasibly get away with the 12s and accomplish you know, the same thing. I am also predominantly a backpack hunter. So weight was always a big trade-off. Now the NL Pures are two ounces heavier than the 10 by 42 victories, but that, I mean, that's a very small price to pay for the increased quality um, of glass, uh, increased zoom, uh, maintenance of field of view. I mean, it's worth it to me. But the 15s, I just got back from a sheep hunt. And I think the 15s are a fantastic option for partner hunting. This is exactly what me and Spencer did. I had a spotting scope in the 12s and he had the 15s and we each had a tripod. And I think if you're going in with somebody, somebody else, that is as perfect a setup as you can get for staying low weight while increasing your, your optics power and the likelihood of finding something. So again, I recognize I called this a versus video and I'm kind of pitting these head to head and it's really an apples to oranges situation. But I do think that through the purchase of one or a combination of these binoculars, you can really create different solutions to the same problem. I've tried my best to give you a firsthand account of my own experience with these, uh, how I feel about them and my kind of objective opinion on them and what I would buy given different budgets, but I'm sure there's stuff I forgot. And if you guys have any questions or comments, uh, post them down below. I'm happy to engage. Um, it's a lot of money.
to spend on these types of binoculars. And I live in Canada. It's really hard to put your hands on these things before you're willing to actually buy them. So I'm happy to do anything I can to help people make those purchasing decisions before they actually have to lay their cash out on the table.